that you were down Is every time you turned your life around I'm Pastor Lemuel Mac Mosette III of the Calvary Baptist Church right here in Santa Monica, California. I'm coming to you from inside this historic sanctuary which has served this community for over 100 years. I want you to know that you are welcome and we are glad that you are here. Listen. As you are a part of us, please remember that Calvary is one faith, one family, one love, one Calvary. Please enjoy the broadcast and be blessed. And we give God praise this morning on a glorious day where we honor our mothers. Every day is Mother's Day because the Bible reminds us that none of us have gotten here um, except through a woman or through a mother. And so we thank God for his gifting to us, his gifting of mothers, his gifting of motherhood and the expression of his love and compassion that flows through the words, the gestures, and the ongoing love that is shared by our mothers. Uh, a call to worship this morning. Scripture comes from Psalm 106, verses one through five, which say, praise, the Lord, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Who can utter the mighty acts of the Lord? Who can declare all his praise? Blessed are those who keep justice, and he who does righteous at all times. Remember me, O Lord, with the favor you have towards your people. O visit me with your salvation, that I may see the benefit of your chosen ones, that I may rejoice in the gladness of your nation, that I may glory with your inheritance. God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God. As we go now to the throne of grace and embrace the privilege of prayer, let us remember those whose names scroll across the bottom of the screen. I invite you to call out the name of your loved one, friend, family member, or even yourself right now, your own name, as we go to God in prayer. God, we thank you right now for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for this day that has been set aside to honor your gift to us, your gift of mothers. We thank you right now for the love that is reflected for the compassion that is reflected, for the kindness that is reflected in mothers whom you have anointed to invest in people. Thank you for who you are. We honor you because of your power. We honor you because of your position. We honor you 
because of your history of love for your people. Thank you, O oh God, for being a loving God. Albeit we see your correction throughout the word, we see even more of your love and your generosity and your care for your people. And so we present ourselves at this time, however we are broken, some strong, some weak, some sick, some well. We present ourselves in every position knowing that wherever we are, you are with us and you can improve us. And so we ask you right now to build us up where we're broken and strengthen us where we're weak and heal us where we're ill if that is in our minds, our hearts, our spirits, wherever we're sick, wherever we're ill, heal us right now. We thank you. We give you praise. We lift you up. We glorify your name. We present those who are struggling right now with bereavement, having lost or missed those who have transitioned from this earthly life. We ask that you would be with those who are traveling, give them grace and safety as they move to their destination. And we pray healing on this country, on this world, on this planet. Get into the hearts of people so that real change can occur. Get into the hearts of people so that real reconciliation can occur. Get into the hearts of people so that real emotional healing can take place. Get into the hearts of people so that we will go, as you said in your word, and teach all nations and baptize them in the name of the Father and Son and Holy Ghost, that we'll teach them to observe all things like you told us to. And we love the fact that you said in your word you would be with us to the ends of the earth. And so bless us as you walk with us in whatever we're going through, as you carry us through whatever we're struggling with. If we're on the top of the mountain, you're there. If we are deep in the valley, you're there. And we praise your name for that. We glorify you. We elevate you right now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. We give God all of the glory and all of the praise for such a wonderful time of fellowship. And as we prepare our hearts and our minds for worship, as we open up our minds to receive, celebration of the gospel, we remind ourselves of the sovereignty of God. We remind ourselves that he's not only in our right now, but he's Alpha <laughs> and he's Omega. And that's the reason we worship him because he is the first, he's the last, he's the beginning and he's our end.
that have caused you maybe to feel low, maybe, maybe to feel less than. Think of how awesome God is in this moment. Think of how amazing he is in this moment. Why? Because we have the activity of our limbs. In the midst of a pandemic, we can still lift our hands and give God glory. We can still celebrate the one who created us. The one who gives us all that we need. The one who meets every need before we even know it's necessary. He deserves it. So help me say it again. We
Good morning to Pastor Mosette, Calvary members, and Calvary friends. I'm Sharon Bennett, and I'm here with your announcements for the week of May 9th. Celebrating birthdays this week, for today we have Sister Laverne Ross. On the 11th, we have Deaconess Joanne Clark. Happy birthday. Again, we would like to remind you of our updated church meeting and worship celebration schedule. As we continue to pray through the COVID-19 pandemic, we are called to be faithful, not foolish. We are also called to love one another. As the County of Los Angeles continues to move in a positive direction and the number of COVID-19 cases continues to go down, we are excited to safely welcome you back to our outdoor services and limited indoor services. We continue to take extreme precautions for our members and guests, especially our most vulnerable. Please note that our spring and summer schedule for in-person services has been published on our website. And if you're unable to go online, it's easy to remember. Each first Sunday, we invite you to celebrate in the sanctuary. And each third Sunday, we invite you to join us for Praise on the Parking Lot, our outdoor worship celebration. Sunday morning Sunday school classes are held at 8.30 a.m. each Sunday via Zoom and Facebook Live. You may log on via the church website and next week's lesson is The Consequences of Giving Challenging Advice, taken from Jeremiah 38, 14 through 23. If you don't have a book, don't worry. A virtual copy of the lesson can be accessed on our website. Please tell friends and family to join us. All are welcome to this hour of power. This is a great opportunity to discuss the word, ask questions, converse with everyone, and grow. As the health and safety of our membership and visitors is our highest priority, our online broadcasts will continue until further notice. If health concerns prevent you from attending any in-person service, please remember that all services will continue to be broadcasted online. Our goal is to continue to make the loving gospel of Christ as accessible as possible. Your continued prayers are appreciated as we move forward safely. We are continuing to work on the partnership with the city and a number of entities to, dis to celebrate Juneteenth here at Calvary. More information will be shared soon, but if you're interested in volunteering, please contact the church office or contact us via the church website. We praise God for his continued infinite blessings as we continue to lift them up to draw all people unto them. I wish you all a happy Mother's Day. Be blessed, stay safe, and I'll see you next week.
the word of God comes to us from a small excerpt in Luke chapter one. And for those of you who know me, maybe you are like me, I, I enjoy um, the first couple of chapters of Luke, specifically getting into Luke chapter two because uh, it goes into the birth of Jesus and that brings so many memories to me. Um, but what I know is that the plan of God is that our savior would have an earthly mother. And on this day, I, uh, my spirit is pricked to consider her and consider the things that we can learn from her and from her interaction with our Savior, who was her Savior, but also her son. And so we praise God for Luke chapter one, verse 46 through about 50, where Mary has been told that she has been chosen to usher in or bring in or lovingly deliver the Son of God, the Savior into the world. And her response is captured. She says, my soul magnifies or my soul doth magnify the Lord and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior for he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God. God, we thank you for the opportunity to honor you by delving into your word. Thank you for elevating principles of meaning that are practical, purposeful, and promising. We ask that you would let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, for you are my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me just tag this text, the voice of a good mother, the voice of a good mother. I'm not gonna hold you long. I, if you give me just about 20 minutes, I, I won't take more than 21 or 22. But as I think about our Savior and his mother, the, the mother that God himself has chosen to bring in the priestly bridge between mankind and God himself. And on this day that we celebrate called Mother's Day, it, it would make sense to, to honor mothers. And I know that is happening. Um, I, I know although we are in 
a global pandemic, we're going to find a way uh, to honor mom with a delicious dinner and uh, gifts and flowers and brunches, bunches of brunches and uh, all kinds of things, and rightfully so. But have you ever asked, I know that I have, if you have a mother who has been so much to you, if you have a mother who has picked you up when you're down, if you've had a mother who has uh, helped you uh, to get through life, if you've had a mother who dried uh, your eyes and kissed your scrapes and uh, wiped your nose when it was running and embraced you when your heart was broken and all of the recurring issues and challenges that you have had over your lifetime that um, you brought to your mother who comforted you, it becomes difficult in one day or with one expression to properly honor her. I know that's true with me. I, I cannot give enough uh, to my mother. I cannot speak well enough about her. There, there's no gift. There's, there's no amount. There's, there's nothing that uh, can reasonably express my love and appreciation for not only what she's done for me, but for what she's done uh, for uh, um, my children and uh, 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 my nieces and nephews and, 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 and friends and neighbors. And uh, her love is so expansive and embracing that it, there's no one thing that I could do that would adequately honor her or be reflective of real expression of gratitude. And I can only live a life that uh, would be pleasing and uh, that she would uh, uh, find um, honorable and acceptable. Uh, I've come to realize that for most Parents and as a parent myself, my greatest joy is parenting and that the children would be successful and happy in their uh, own lives. But I sometimes ask as I look at this text, uh, understanding that um, the word of God leaves great blueprints uh, with historical narratives that we can raise principles from to apply practically to our lives. And I think when we think of Jesus's mother, we consider her the mother of the most impactful person in history. I mean, Jesus, as we have spoken about in recent weeks, uh, was an extraordinary counterculturalist to such point that he writes a fully new narrative in that he creates an opportunity for humanity to embrace and receive eternal life. You can't top that. There's nothing that you can do that can top that. But on this day, we think about this fact that God chose for this bridge, this priestly connection, this changer of humanity to be brought into earthly existence by young mother. 
Now, one of the first things that I think it ought to do to us is it, it ought to put our misogyny away, men. It ought to put our oppressive thinking away. It ought to put away those things in our minds and our hearts that make uh, women second class citizens. It should put all of that away because the son of God comes through a mother, a woman, a young woman who when she is approached by an angel and told this news, she responds in such a way that she gives thanks and, and magnifies the Lord. The, the line or the statement that she says when she says, my soul magnifies the Lord to magnify means to make it greater and soul indicates the depth. She, she, she says that deep down within me at, at places that are unreachable, at places in depths that are only contactable and recognizable by God himself because he is the one who breathes into mankind the breath of life and man becomes a living soul. She says deep in that place, that place that it that could appreciate the wind, that could appreciate the water, that could appreciate the beauty of life and flowers and trees and nature. That place goes straight to the Lord and magnifies him in such a way that it shakes the very earth and nothing else matters. And she says, my soul magnifies him because he recognizes me in my lowly state. He recognizes me right where I am. He recognizes me for who I am and who I will be and who he has decided that I will be. The mother of the one who brings abundant life, the mother of the one who says that life is not constrained by the law, but freedom is in his very word, the mother. And so, as I said, it should put away our misogyny. It should put away any chauvinist tendencies. I mean, if it's if you need it. Scripturally, I mean, first Corinthians 11 reminds us that in verse 12, for as woman came from man, even so man also comes through woman, but all things are from God. There is no separating, no squashing of the reality of the power of a woman, especially when we consider our mothers. I mean, if you hang your hat on science, there would be no Albert Einstein without Pauline Einstein. If you if you hang your hat on civil rights there, there, there there's no Martin Luther King Jr. without Alberta Williams King. God has anointed mothers and whether it is the mother of an iconic world changing figure or the mother of just a homeboy on the street. God has recognized the beauty and importance 
of mother. And so the question then springs forward. Well, well, what kind of mother? What kind of mother would be the mother of someone like Jesus the Christ? What, what kind of mother is the mother of a world changer? The, the reality is that that mother is no different or at least shouldn't be any different than any other mother. She, she should embrace the essence of the words of the mother of Jesus in both principle and in practice. Believe it or not, I'm almost through. One of the first things that you recognize in the voice of Mary, the mother of Jesus, is her humility. The voice of a good mother is humble. Yes, she said, her soul magnified the Lord and, and that she rejoiced in God, her Savior, but it was because of his recognition of her lowly estate. Yes, she says that all generations would call her blessed, but she takes it right back to him and says, for the mighty one has done great things for me. The first thing then we see in her response is the voice of humility. What does James 4 and 10 remind us? Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up or exalt you. One of the challenges that we often face with a voice of humility is we take meekness for weakness. And let me tell you this, uh, there is no lack of strength in the humble voice of a good mother because her strength is in her ability to curate the type of love and respect that we see in the relationship that Mary has with her son. I'll bring it to you this way. In John chapter two, we see a glimpse of Jesus's first miracle where he performs a miracle of turning uh, water into wine at a wedding in Cana. But as you read that narrative, as you read that reflection, you will see specifically in verse three that that issue is introduced to him by his mother. When she says to him, they have no more wine. And he says, well, why are you involving me? And she says to the servants to do whatever he tells you to do. And the story goes on that they were instructed to fill the barrels with water. And when the uh, master of the house or, or uh, of the wedding tasted it, it was the best wine to such point. He said, you saved the best for last. Now, this was Jesus's first miracle where where his power was shown. But do you see the involvement of his mother from the standpoint that he is responsive to her and sees her place as a thread in the fabric of God's plan, not insignificantly, but 
highly significantly Jesus responds. And there is this great movement that pushes forward in her humility is her strength. The voice of a good mother is not one that has to crush spirits, but it is one that curates love and fosters kindness. The voice of a good mother is filled with compassion. Listen to the voice of God as the psalmist says that the Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made in Psalm 145 verses eight and nine. Is not that like the voice of a good mother who is compassionate and concerned all at the same time? It's interesting as you move on through the story of Jesus as a boy growing up, so specifically in the early chapters of uh, the Gospel of Luke, you will read where the family goes to uh, Jerusalem and um, there are a number of them traveling together and they go and they leave and Jesus, they thought, was with them. It turns out he was not and they have to go back and find him. They're looking for him for three days. And there is a level of concern that is expressed by his mother. Compassion and concern. That's what I like to call active compassion. Have you ever come across somebody who just doesn't care? Just doesn't seem to care. Just does not seem interested. I, I, I'm highly troubled uh, when there's an issue with a child and, and I'm calling and calling and, and, and emailing and texting and whatever I'm trying to do to get in touch. And when I finally do, I, I hear uh, from a parent or for, from a mother who does not seem concerned. The voice of a good mother is that of active compassion. Compassion that seeks the opportunity to embrace. Compassion that seeks the opportunity to heal. The compassion that does not wait for you to come here, but comes from here to where you are. That is the compassion of a loving God as it is expressed and reflected by loving mother, Mary, soul magnifying the Lord, but remaining humble, active in her compassion, in loving her children as they grew, staying connected with not only her savior, but also her son. And then a voice, as I close, of a good mother. You will hear love without condition. Doesn't mean that mama approves of everything you do. Doesn't mean that she always likes who you're hanging out with. Doesn't mean that she approves of your recklessness. Doesn't mean that she advocates or supports all of your choices. 
What it means is she embraces the reality that Paul brings forward in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 when he talks about love. He places no condition on it, none whatsoever. He understands the stress that can be involved in certain behaviors. But he makes this statement that I love in verse four. He says, love suffers long and is kind. I love the fact that I believe that there's nothing that I can do that would make my mother stop loving me. Isn't that like God? That he would love the world so much that he would send his son to a people who have disappointed him, a people who have gone away from him, a people who have committed and recommitted and recommitted over and over again. Yet he loves with such non-condition that he says, wherever you are, I'm sending my son for a person like you. And one of the final things that he says, that Paul says in that chapter as he talks about things that will fall away. As he was writing to the Corinthian church here, there were gifts that they were concerned about. And he was trying to tell them that the thing that you need to hold most dear to is not all of the gifts, but hold on to love. And he says in verse eight, the reason is because love never fails. A good mother. And I have to think about Mary, the mother of Jesus, humble in her voice, yet strong and powerful in her statement. Well, she says that because I've been blessed, because I've been selected, to mother the gift from heaven to earth. Because God, you recognized me in my lowly estate, in the depth of my humility. She says from the place that's so deep inside, sometimes when God does something for you, you have to reach down and give him praise. Not just praise from your mouth, not just clapping in your hands, but it comes from the depths of your soul. She said, my soul does magnify you. Hallelujah. From the deepest parts of who I am, from the bottom of my feet to the top of my head, I magnify you and I lift you up. But can't you see her? A young girl, insignificant, otherwise unheard of, somebody nobody even thought about. Humility coming through her voice, but strength being expressed in her character. Thank God for mothers who speak with a voice of humility. 
and as her savior and her son grew in grace, she remained actively compassionate, following his every move, supporting him as a child and listening to him as a teacher. Thank God for his mother. Thank God for mothers who are active with their compassion. Mothers who don't wait for you to come to them, but they will come to you. Isn't that like God? He's compassionate. Yes, he is compassionate. The psalmist said on all that he has made. Yes, that good mother, her voice is expressive, it's active, and it's practical. And finally, she loves without condition. I wish I had a witness in the house. She loves without condition, just like her son lived and how he died, loving us without condition. I wish I had a witness in the house. You cannot march your way to Calvary and have conditions. You gotta love without condition because if they put nails in my hands and nails in my feet, I'd have something to say. I'd wanna fight back. I, I couldn't deal with it. But Jesus, our savior, was able to endure even to the cross. Loved us enough to forgive us, saying, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. But we have a glimpse of a very special relationship as he hangs from the cross and looks at his mother and makes sure that she is cared for as he says to her to behold her son and to the disciple whom he loved to behold his mother. And from that day, he took her home to be with him. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us the example of care for the ones who have brought us into the world, the ones who in most cases have loved us most, the ones who have offered us the most compassion, the ones who have had the most strength wrapped up in their humility, the ones who have loved us without condition. Thank you for loving us and giving us a reflective example through the voice of a mother. Thank you for the story that does not end with your head hung low, but uh, ends uh, with the reality that you were buried in a borrowed grave. But early, early, early Sunday morning, you got up with all power in your hand. Thank you for the women who came early to an empty grave while the men were still in hiding. Thank you for mothers of humility, mothers of compassion, and mothers who love without condition. You got up with all power in your hand. You got up to support us. You got up to advocate for us. You got up with all grace, all compassion, all humility, all strength, all love 
without condition. Thank you. I've got to go. Happy Mother's Day. Enjoy your brunch. But sometimes you might want to think about mama and tell him thank you. Thank you for mama. Thank you for her loving hands. Thank you for her tender kiss. Thank you for her healing embrace. Thank you. God bless your heart. I love you. I'll see you next week. But God, I praise you for a loving mother who loved me without condition. Expressed strength in humility. Hallelujah. But was compassionate and remains compassionate to this very day. How can I say thanks for the things you've done for me? Things so undeserved yet you gave to prove your love to me. The voices of a million angels could not express my gratitude. All that I am and ever hope to be, I owe it all to thee. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory for the things he has done. With his blood he has saved me. With his power he has raised me. To God be the glory for the things that he has done. God, we thank you right now for all that you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the examples. Thank you for your compassion, your unconditional love. We bless you. We thank you for our mothers in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen and amen. As that song plays, you might be one who would like to give your life to Christ. And our first concern is that you would join him. Join Jesus. Join Jesus the Christ who loves you who does not seek to constrain you, but seeks to expand you and grow you. Your life is meaningful. Who you are is important. And we would love to have you be a part of the Calvary family. You might say, Reverend, I'm saved, I'm sure. I'm an active member of a fellowship in my area. And I say, praise God for that. You can join us as an online member or you can join us as a physically present member. You might say, Reverend, I'm saved, I'm sure, but I don't have a local fellowship. I don't have a church home. Well, I say to you that we would love to have you after you have that connection with Christ. It's already in your life. We would love to have you be a part of the ministries that grow and work from this location. Finally, you might say, Reverend, I'm not saved. I'm not sure, but something touched me. Well, let me tell you this. It wasn't me. It was him. And when you can realize that it is he who has touched you, you're ready to begin a relationship with him that will be lasting, full of growth and joy. And we would love to have you. Give us a call, send us a text, an email. Uh, we seek to connect with you and walk with you and grow with you. God, we thank you for <clears throat> your gift uh, that you brought to us through a beautiful mother, Mary. Thank you for the example 
the principles that you express to us through her, through her life and the relationship that we viewed between her and her savior, her son. Bless us now in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, I thank you for being here and joining me today. I pray that you have been touched by the word of God or something that has happened during the broadcast. Please know that we would love for you to join us in worship, in giving and sharing your gifts. Um, help this ministry to move forward and Every gift that is shared goes to move the gospel of Jesus Christ forward in a way that brings joy to the lives of people. So as the prompts show, you are welcome to share your gift on our website or using the online platforms, PayPal, Venmo, or if you prefer, mail your gift in to the Calvary Baptist Church, 1502 20th Street, Santa Monica, California, zip 90404. We give God praise for your generosity and we thank him for how he has affected your life. As you go, please receive this benediction for it is now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his throne of grace to the only wise God, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever. Amen and amen. God bless your hearts. I will see you next week. Oh yeah, that's a real good thing to tell him. Sing with us, come on.